<laughs> Welcome back, folks, to Fish and Planet. Today's a interesting video here on the channel. We talked about it in the final stream of the last tournament. Um, but you guys kind of wanted to see an overrated video and an underrated video. So here is the top five overrated items or things I find in uh, Fish and Planet. And one is going to be a little bit obvious. We're, we're going to start with it. At number five is, is advanced licenses, folks. So if we go into here, um, one thing I'm going to show you is a lot of people will go including myself in the past before I knew better, and buy bake, these licenses as bait coins. Now, I'm not saying they're a terrible idea. If you do a lot of comps, they'll help you out. Uh, but if you're just day-to-day -day fishing at a lake and um, you want to just, you know, go somewhere uh, and fish it, you'll find in most cases that just catching one or two fish will pay for your license and you won't have to give up 2,600 bait coins. <laughs> For example, as you can see, we have a unique rainbow trout here. $800. This was literally my first cast, as you can see, right here. So it was $800. We'll leave the lake and we'll, and I'll go show you for uh, the price that you get for one fish at a lot of these places. Um, it's really not worth it unless, you're, like I said, you're doing a lot of comps. Let's repair that. Let's go over here now um, and to the shop. And we'll go exactly to the license so you can see right with me. Uh, so that is, oh, let's just click the license and we'll go advanced. It's, it's easier to sort them out that way. Um, and as you can see right here, that was basically half of our license right there uh, on one fish. So you can see... Uh, and then later on, it gets even crazier. So if you get down to the Congo, one now perch can pay for, you know, five of your licenses. You know, or even almost six if you catch a really good one. Um, so just keep that in mind. I'm not saying don't buy licenses with bait coins um, because... If you're doing comps, they're really handy, and, and it's nice not to waste your time buying one. But for the most part, I find these super under overrated. And I can tell you, because as you can see here, I have almost all of them that you can have. So <laughs> um, I am missing a few, but um, I do have, I'm missing a couple of the new ones. But at number four, this is a very interesting one that I don't think anybody would think of. Uh, but if you, and this pertains to lower levels, I'll see people that buy packs, which go ahead, buy packs. I'm totally for it, but I will see somebody take a 900 pound, like keep net, uh, when they're low level, the mud water. And for example, you don't need it there and you're going to be just paying for giant repairs. So if you're low level and you don't understand what I'm saying, we're going to unequip this bag right here, right? So let's go over to the bag, and um, we're going to go ahead and repair this right here. It's not even in the yellow, not even in the yellow. This is pretty, you know, this has only been used a few times. And you're going to see, look at this repair, 39000 I see a lot of low-level people do this, and they wonder why they run out of money. Just to repair this keep net, you would have to fish like a lower-level lake, uh, you know, probably... Something like, you know, Emerald Lake, you probably have to try to fish it for basically four or five hours to even get a shot at repairing this net. So use the net most appropriate to you. Obviously, big nets will help you, but the, these bigger nets, as you can see, even with a little damage, they're quite a bit of repair. So unless you're going to somewhere... Like Florida, where you can fill it up. I think Florida is really the first place I've ever filled up a really big keep net. I just recommend you go buy one of these, uh, you know, lower level keep nets right here. They're easier to repair. And, and even a better option, if you're at a low lake, is, is using stringers. They're even cheaper to buy. Um... And down the road, you can use that big keep net if you have it. But 
I definitely would wait until you're going somewhere where you need that amount of fish. At number three, folks, I was going to put the Cosmo Cast because it's the worst pull in the game, especially when you compare it to the Zeus's and other stuff that is there at that level. Um, but I'm starting, I think people are starting to realize how bad this pull is and, and overrated it obviously is. So I'm not putting that in the list. Instead, uh, this is going to be a surprise to a lot of people, but the Sharp Caster is going to be number three folks and i'm going to show you all the reasons why um and so i actually had to buy this setup because i don't have it anymore because i just have not used it in a long time now there was a time frame where this thing uh reigned king and as you can see here also the prices from the sharp caster when you can uh, to the Tropicana really aren't that different. It's like six grand. Um, but anyway, we have these setups here and I'm gonna go to a lake and show you why. Now I've equipped uh, a two ounce flat spoon to these, not because this is what you'd use at the lake, just to show you casting distance. And these poles here that the Nile Chaser and the Tropicana, as you guys know, are higher level. And normally when you get to higher level poles, they cast lower, um, and, and in you know the lower the lower level poles would cast higher, but as you can see on this right here, uh, that's that's like 190 that mark right there uh, with the two ounce, which is about as far as you can throw with this sharp caster. Uh, it, it it barely gets to there, so if you go to the Tropicana right here you'll see that it goes even farther and it's a higher level pull with more power. And if you go to the Nile Chaser even yet, you can see it's even farther yet. Uh, so not only does it cast shorter, one other thing I wanna show you guys is it has the slowest recovery. And with that, so if you look here, that's 37. This is 43.5 and uh, 45 and the slowest recovery that I generally use in the game barring really crazy circumstances is about 40 so it's a little bit slower than that another problem you have with slow recovery is that a lot of times on a, uh, a big fish that you're fighting if you have slow recovery when it charges you a lot of times it's gonna unhook or it can unhook, I should say. The other issue with this pull is being a bait caster, all you basically can only put uh, a very limited amount of reels on it, and they're all the same recovery. So you can't even adjust the recovery on it. It is a very, a very limited setup, guys. And I'm surprised that still as many people use it as what they do, especially when you have. Even if you do, for example, like casting rods, when you have this one just right above it, that is just a much more better, uh, much uh, more balanced setup to in pull, and you can get it maxed out real easily. Um, but I'm not going to drag on too long about this. I just wanted to show you guys why I find it really overrated. Okay, anybody that's been around my channel knows this one was coming. <laughs> This is the Kraken on the Zeus. There's not that it's a terrible option. It's definitely still a decent setup, but I see too many people pushing this setup when there's a way better option for this Zeus. So a uh, few things I want to mention right away is the Zeus is a great pull in general because you can put uh, essentially a bunch of different reels on it. You can go all the way from 31 recovery to 60 uh, or 59 inch recovery it's a huge rain that means this reel right here on two speed is actually the same as this one basically on one speed we're going to talk about that a little bit and that's why i find the kraken overrated because everybody tries to push this thing even though that the spot reel in most scenarios is a much better option i see this all the time so we're gonna go like we're at um, uh, Emerald here, and this is a bass setup that is very popular down here, and um, 
Um, we're just going to go ahead and cast out, and I'm going to show you this. So this is on three speed right here, and uh, we're going to drop it in, and you can see this thing really doesn't want to come off the bottom. And that, in a lot of cases, when you throw heavier stuff with the Zeus, uh, this is an issue you run in with a crack in, in a lot of setups. And, and not only that, too, I'm going to be very clear here, guys. A Kraken on 3-speed is essentially the same as the Spod Reel on 2-speed. So I'm going to show you guys. So um, we're going to go in, reel this in. Now we're going to throw that Spot on. That's the, the way, much better option in most scenarios. And we're just going to cast out there really quickly. And you're going to see that 2-speed is the same. And why that in, is important is because... You're wasting time. If you're using the Kraken on three speed, you can see this is kind of having the same problem, you know, getting off the bottom. We go to three speed like the where the Kraken was, it has no issue. And I'm just going, you know, I'm just floating it right here along the bottom. This is how I bass fish down here. And uh, But anyway, the big difference is when I go to four speed, look how fast that thing comes in. When you do that on the Kraken, it's a little slower. So you're wasting time when you hook a fish. And not only that, uh, but with that higher recovery, it's much harder for a fish to get off on the spot. Uh, I do use the Kraken from time to time. It's probably what I use the most on top water on my Zeus. But for almost everything else, I go to the spot reel, guys. Um, and hopefully we start to see this change here and people see that. Not only that, but just in general, you're getting more power out of this setup. You're getting 45 out of your 46 pound pole in here you're only getting 43 out of uh, out of your 46 pound uh, setup all right before we get to number one make sure you guys are putting down your most overrated things down in the comments because as you guys know i answer to every comment unless it's, it's a ridiculous one um and i want to hear your guys's opinion on overrated stuff but at number one folks this one, a lot of people is going to disagree with me, and that's because they haven't, uh, I don't think they've done enough research. But the Emerald Lake Walleye Farm, this is one of my big pet peeves. We actually, I'll leave a video link below of our leveling farm uh, video for each lake. Um, while it is a good farm at level 8, uh, that's all it's good for. <laughs> it's the first place that you make money at. Uh, then you go uh, go to Naharan, which is only two levels later. And the amount that you make per hour goes from, at Emerald Lake, it's 6800 per hour with with the gear that's available at level 8, uh, to Naharan, which is over 10400 per hour. Uh, at uh, you see a lot of thing, people say stay at Emerald Lake for a long time. And and to me, you're wasting your time. Uh, and this doesn't just pertain to the Emerald Lake farm um, because almost every farm is overrated in the game. Uh, that same video shows you as you go up, uh, the money gets better almost at every lake per hour. Almost, not everyone. For example, Naharan, and then you go to Falcon Lake over here. And as you guys know from our leveling XP video, uh, this one is 13,500 per in game or per hour. So you don't want to just sit at Emerald Lake and catch walleyes. I see a lot of people do this. In fact, when I first started playing, I did this like seven years ago because I started on PC. And I sat at Emerald Lake almost to level 30. And it was a really, really poor idea. So each lake, Emerald Lake specifically, that's the one I see the most. The other one is the Sturgeon Farm at California. I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me. Uh, or, you know, I, I know some of you guys are going to disagree with me because uh, a lot of you guys just sat at them farms like I did. But then later on, when you go to these other lakes and you realize, oh, the smallmouth and largemouth are paid more, uh, you know, you're getting more from the largemouth and smallmouth than you are from the walleye or, you know, or, or more from the trout at Falcon. And then you start to realize 
uh, yeah, maybe Emerald the Emerald Lake Farm is a bit overrated. Anyway, make sure you guys comment down below. I really do want to see what your most overrated stuff is. Uh, but uh, you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you next time, folks.